Um, today, I just want to speak about what exactly it means to make no provision for the flesh. As the Bible records in the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 14. Uh, we see that uh, the Bible in the book of Romans uh, 13, from verse 11 to actually 14, let me read for you this one. It tells us, uh, this is Paul actually speaking. Uh, he tells us, uh, let me read for you. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. And the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly, as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill the lusts thereof. Now, guys, we, we understand that uh, the Apostle Paul was turning his attention to the end times, encouraging Christians to wake up from their slumber because uh, basically our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed, especially when you look at verse 11. And uh, we understand that with the end of the age in view, Paul concluded the segment with this summary. He said in Romans 13 verse 14, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Instead of wasting precious time satisfying lustful and selfish cravings, uh, the Apostle Paul roused believers to clothe themselves in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Uh, when you look at the Bible in the book of Ephesians chapter 22, uh, actually from verse 4 to, to verse 22 to 24, it says that you puff off concerning the former conversation of the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Here Paul gave a strikingly similar exhortation to make no provision for the flesh. Of course, he said, since you have heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former ways of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Friends, the flesh which is spoken in Romans 3, uh, 13 verse 14, refers to the physical bodily aspects of a person as opposed to the immaterial soul or spirit. And in scripture, the flesh is often understood as a seat of sin and rebellion towards God. All right? And the word for provision in the original language carries the idea of thinking about what you will do in the event of something happening. If we think about pleasing our flesh, we furnish the fuel to make it happen. And... Uh, as though our thoughts gather the necessary provisions to move forward and act upon our lustful desires, therefore, just make no provision for the flesh. It is basically a word which could be translated, do not think about how to gratify the desires of the flesh. Don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires or uh, just basically forget about satisfying the desires of your sinful nature. To make provision for the flesh is uh, just to expect it to fail. It is like an al alcoholic who, who is trying to stay sober, but who tracks away a little liquor in secret stash, just in case, <laughs> you know. And uh, he's basically making provision for the flesh and will likely fall or re fail to remain sober. He will fall over and over. And in a similar way, those who seek to live godly lives must identify their stumbling blocks and remove them. Believers are to live and behave like Jesus Christ did. And to do this, we must put on fleshly thoughts. Basically put off all the fleshly thoughts out of our minds. Scripture explains that the battle over sin is fought in the mind, not anywhere else. Romans 
7 21 it says I, I find then a law that when i will do good evil is present with me for i delight in the law of god after the inward man but i see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bring me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members friends this is the apostle paul trying to hustle as much as he can to make sure that uh, he does not justify the flesh but the flesh is still trying to get this but uh, it's very very important we understand we don't give any opportunity to the flesh because that's where the problem arises and the apostle peter urged the early disciples to basically abstain from sinful desires which wage war against our soul first peter 2 11 it it says this dearly beloved i beseech you as strangers and pilgrims abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul sinful thinking influences our behavior to the point of gratifying the cravings of our flesh ephesians 2 3 it tells us about this among whom we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. And when we dwell on sin, friends, we have to understand that we follow his desires. Scripture always emphasizes the incredible power of the thought of life. Making no provision for the flesh requires taking captivity basically captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. 2 Corinthians 10.5 it says, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. So now how do we do this? How do we, have, how do we get to do this right? It is all by guarding our hearts and thinking about worthy things. The Apostle Paul once again said in Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, uh, un- admirable if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And we see also another example uh, where, where uh, Paul is saying in the book of Colossians 3, 1 to 2, he, he basically says this, let me just read for you. If you, br- uh, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on the things above, not on the things on the earth. All right? So this is just making suggestion or telling you to make no provision for the flesh. All right? Make no provision for the flesh. And uh, as new creatures in Christ, we have the mind of Christ. All right? We are new in Christ, okay? As the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ is a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So we know we are new, Okay? And after we know that we are new, we have the mind of Christ. Okay, 1 Corinthians 2 verse 14. The Bible says, But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. We have the mind of Christ, so we can discern spiritual things. We can discern spiritual things, okay? And uh, in the book of Philippians, Uh, chapter 2 verse 5 it says let this mind be in you let this mind be in you okay which was also in christ jesus this mind which was in christ jesus let it be in you let it be in you okay and he taught christians to have the same mindset as christ jesus which is the mind of christ and which was made known to believers by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Remember this in the book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. He says, But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I have said unto you. Okay? And also if we check uh, at John 16, from verse 12 to 15, he says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How bait when he, the spirit of truth, who is that spirit of truth? The Holy Spirit, because that spirit is written in capital S. 
is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, he shall speak and he will show you things. Are, are you seeing the point here? So the Holy Spirit will not be speaking about himself. He will not be saying about himself. He will be speaking about Jesus Christ. He will be teaching you all things. Okay? Let me also show you a couple of more verses here. Romans 8, 9, it says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. So, so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. 1 Corinthians uh, 2, verse 11 to 13, it says, uh, For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the Spirit of man which is in him? This is not just this the man man asked no it is the man jesus even so things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god and it continues verse 12 it tells us but now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god that we may know the things that are all right now friends as we yield to the holy spirit's leading we are transformed by the renewal of our minds and can better discern the will of God. Romans 12 verse 1 to 2, it tells us, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do you have your mind renewed? That's the main thing. Because Paul, we understand Paul told the Galatians to walk by the Spirit and they will not gratify the desires of the flesh, Galatians 5.16. And we make no provision for the flesh when we live in obedience to God and His Word and keep in step with the Spirit by crucifying the flesh with His passions and desires. Like the Bible told us in Galatians 24 verse uh, uh, 5 verse 24, it says, And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the, with the affections and lusts, all right? And if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Are you living in the Spirit? Are you walking in the Spirit? And the only way to experience real abundant life in the Spirit is to die to the flesh. You have to die to the flesh. The Bible told us, as I wind up in the book of uh, Romans 8, uh, from verse 12 to 13, it says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. But if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you, 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 you live through the Spirit, you mortify the deeds of the body and you shall live. All right? So that is the message. And I believe it was really a blessing to you. That's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you didn't learn something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible study question. And if you'd like to get saved or you need a, a step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family, or maybe just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website, Keith moki.com for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.